every 10 years, every state has to redistrict, and that just means that you have to redraw your election district lines. Um, and that, you know, determines who you get to vote for. Districts need to be roughly equal in population. And because population changes, we know that it changes, people are born, people die, people move into locations, they move out of locations. We need to adjust the districts to the, those population changes. You know, over the last few years, um, people have started understanding that the way you draw district lines actually determines more than who you get to vote for. Um, if lines are drawn a certain way by politicians, then our politicians really can choose who, um, who gets to vote for them. So they get to choose the outcome of elections as opposed to voters choosing their politicians. So in Wisconsin, we have politicians in charge of drawing districts that will be used to elect them for the most part. So as you can imagine, the politicians in our state legislature have their own interests that come into play when they're proposing these districts. They want to make sure that they can get reelected, that their political party stays in power. That's one of the reasons that we've seen such an extreme gerrymander in our state over the past decade and why so many people across our state have spoken out against it. I feel that after 2010, when they redrew the district boundaries, it affected me greatly. I didn't realize it at the time. I was used to having uh, legislators who lived in the community who were accessible. So this new district, split the district that I was in and put me in a district that is very different from what I was used to. The legislators um, that are in my district, I don't feel that they really represent my interests. I don't see them in my neighborhood. I don't see them in my community. And so I think it has had a very negative effect on me and my neighbors and the city of Milwaukee. Senate Bill 621, relating to legislative redistricting, by Senator Lemmy and others. In Wisconsin, it's the legislature that has the initial responsibility to draw new state legislative districts and congressional districts. The governor is also involved in redistricting in our state. He or she has the duty to approve the maps that are drawn by the legislature or reject them. If you have unified control over both the legislature and the uh, governor's office, by the same political party, then um, it allows that political party to seek an, uh, an opportunity to advantage itself. That's the partisan gerrymandering that comes into play, and that's what we saw in 2011. The districts were drawn up in secret. They were rolled out by the majority party, the Republicans, uh, just days before they were presented on the floor of the legislature um, and the legislature was going to vote on them. So the people of Wisconsin really did not have any opportunity whatsoever in 2011 to make their views known on what they thought about those proposed districts. Wisconsin's my home state, but in this instance, I am not proud of the way that Wisconsin handles uh, this core function of civic society. This year, uh, Wisconsin had what we call an impasse where the legislature is held by, is Republicans uh, and the governor is a Democrat in Wisconsin and there was no effort uh, between those two entities to try to come to some sort of compromise and instead uh, the Wisconsin State Supreme Court was called upon to adjudicate the case. I think um, the community's voice and the spirit of the community needs to be taken into consideration. I think a lot of times lines are drawn based off of political political agendas, um, how people are able to maintain or gain even more power. And unfortunately, when people are able to draw themselves and to gerrymander themselves into safe districts, they don't have to actually listen to their constituents. Overall, I would say if I were to grade the Wisconsin process for adopting new redistricting plans, I would give it a decided F to F minus. Um, certainly no voters were involved in the process and it is just uh, hard to even compare that to the type of process we saw play out in states like Michigan where the real central focus of the process was the voters and the communities and making sure that their interests were represented and that the politics was stripped out entirely. 
Historically, Michigan has been one of the worst gerrymandered states in the country. We had what a lot of states have, which is um, politicians drawing our election district lines every 10 years. No matter how people voted in Michigan, kind of our election outcomes would always be the same. So what we did in 2018 was we started a citizens movement and we wanted to make sure to take politicians out of redistricting and put citizens uh, in the role of drawing our district lines. We have a citizens commission so it's everyday Michiganders. Politicians can't serve on our commission. Um, neither can lobbyists or you know special interests. And what excited me most about it is that citizens were able to have their own voice heard by fellow citizens, us as commissioners. And it wasn't politicians. It weren't people that were um, you know paid large salaries or have been doing this all you know all their lives. These were people with fresh ideas and and real lived histories coming together to make something different happen in the state of Michigan. As Detroiters, we have been preyed on for decades by these district lines. Everything from redlining, gentrification of our neighborhoods, predatory insurance practices, and most importantly, lack of representation. We are currently together in Congress uh, and State Senate, but we are broken up into two districts in the State House. I believe that we have a lot more uh, that binds us together than that keeps us apart. How many things work well when they are fractured or spread out too thin to hold anything? This is about having a cohesive district where district lines don't snake around, go sideways or up and down in narrow bands to reach favorable voters and to any given party. We saw that in Michigan this year, not only did the commission travel around the state, but the public hearings were held virtually as well. And it resulted in you know, reams of paper of public comments that if you listen to the commission's proceedings, you see that they paid attention to and really reflected upon those uh, suggestions and comments and, and used that to come up with the map that was passed. There's a lot of discussion and, you know, there's a lot at stake, right? So you have people's pensions and, you know, roads and you have, you know, there's education and things that people really feel strongly about and that affects everyone's daily life. This new Michigan commission was just leaps and bounds better for democracy than uh, the process we see in neighboring states uh, like in Wisconsin, which was total dysfunction. When the legislature is drawing the lines, they're sitting at a computer and picking the voters that they want to have in their district that they think will best suit their political needs. And that's not the way that this should happen. We are a democracy. Uh, and in a democracy, the voters should be choosing the politicians. The politicians should not be choosing the voters.